You're listening to the 17th edition of the Mashiach Podcast. 1948, 1967, 2024. That's the title of this podcast. And we're going to explore, explore the connection between this year, the Jewish year, Tavshin Pei Dalet, 5784, and here's Tavshin Ches, 1948, Tavshin Chav Zayin, 1967. We'll also see the connection to the year 2005, as well as the year 1492, interestingly. Before we get into it, before we tar- start talking about this, I want to just tell you that the ideas that I'm going to share with you are my own ideas. They are things that I've been thinking about for many, many years. I'm going to include in the YouTube description links to particular parts of this shear, texts that you can actually read yourself, stuff that I wrote more than 13 years ago, approximately 13 years ago, when I first started thinking about these ideas. And I've waited a long time to present this information. Some of it, or much of it, I have talked about in the past, in previous Mashiach podcasts, but never did I speak about it in the context of the year Tavshin Pedal, this year that we're coming into now, the end of 2023, the beginning of 2024. And I've been thinking in my mind that I'd like to speak about this for at least a year, a year and a half, maybe even two years. And I've been held back because I wasn't sure if it was right to talk about it. I wasn't sure if, you know, you, know, you could say things that, and, and a lot of what we're going to say is going to be a little bit general. And some of the stuff we're going to speak about is going to be pretty specific as far as our year, this year that we're in now and the significance of it. I also didn't know, and I still don't know, exactly what it will look like and how it will play itself out. I knew that there were certain points to be looking for, certain times. And as you are all aware, I'm sure, all that's gone on in the last few days in Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel, is certainly, it certainly gives us a direction of what's happening and where we're headed. And, uh, but, but what does it look like and what does it mean? Is there a greater significance to what's going on in the land of Israel right now? To the war that's going on, is there, is there, is this really something huge? Is this something really, really big? Is this part of something, is it part of a, a major, major process, a turning point in a process, the Mashiach process? That's what we're going to discuss and that's where, what we're going to explore. 1948, you all know, was the year that the Jewish people proclaimed the state. 1967 was the year that we got back Yerushalayim, we got back Yudav Shamron, Judea and Samaria incredible miracles of the Six-Day War. How does that connect to the year 2024, to this year that we're in now, Tavshin Pei Dalad? Is there something intricate, intimate, really is the word I'm looking for, intimately connected to this year? What's going on? So, <clears throat> there's an idea, and this is, this is foundational. If you understand this, you can understand a lot. You can really understand a lot. And the ideas that I'm going to, to, to share with you as I said, are from my own intuition, from my own noticing patterns. Because if you look in reality, you'll find Hashem shows us there are certain patterns that exist in the world. These patterns are based on Kabbalistic ideas as well that have to do, and we'll we'll explore this further as we continue. Um, But there's a certain way that Hashem interacts with the world. A certain rubric through which he interacts with us. And if we start to understand it, we start to notice the hints, we'll start to see that, hey, we're in a process, we're in a, an incredible process. And before I get into the, the years, 48, 67, 2024, 20, before I get into that, I want to point out something which a lot of people are not so aware of. And that has to do with Mashiach and the Mashiach process. Many people think that Mashiach is going to arrive in a, in, a, in a moment, in a flash. Like what happened with the Exodus. You know, Hashem did all of these miracles. And we've actually spoken about this in previous Shia podcasts. Like Hashem did there, there were miracles. You know, He showed the world. He showed Paro, the Pharaoh, the, the, the ten plagues. And there's going to be something like that in the future. When Mashiach, the Messiah, arrives, it's going to be, you know, miracles, amazing wonders, like no one's ever seen before. Right? We have all the songs. Someday we will all be together. All these songs, all these descriptions 
of, of what it's going to look like in that magical moment when Mashiach arrives. But I have to read to you a Pasuk. It's a Pasuk that we read not long ago in Aftor, Parsha Shoftim. It's, it's a Pasuk in Ishai in Isaiah chapter 60, I'm sorry, chapter 52. It says in the Pasuk, and it's speaking about the Messianic age or the moment, or I don't want to say the moment because that's the point. We're speaking about the time when Mashiach is, is, is coming. It's on its way. Chasaf Hashem, this is a Pasuk in Yeshayah Perik Nun Beis, Pasuk Yud. Chasaf Hashem is Zerah Kodshay. Hashem has revealed His holy arm, His holy might. Leine Kol to the eyes of all of the nations. Vero Kol Aretz Es Yeshua Selekeinu. The entire world will see the salvation of Hashem. They were talking about Mashiach. Suru Suru Tzu Misham. Get out, get out of there. Tame al tigo, don't touch anything impure. Tzu'umi techam, get out of them. Leave the exile, leave the gallus, leave the place of impurity. Yibaru noisekli Hashem. Those who carry the vessels of Hashem, those who are connected to God, those who, come to, who fulfill His commandments, the Jewish people, it's time to leave your gallus. It's time to leave your exile. And here's the Here's the Pasuk. Because we, we have this vision of how it was in the Exodus. The Pasuk says it's not going to be out as it was in the Exodus. <speaking in Hebrew> will not leave quickly. It's not going to be a magical moment that happens in a, in a flash. <speaking> in <Hebrew> You're not going to run out. <speaking in Hebrew> Hashem your God is stepping in front of you. Hashem is leading you, guiding you back. He's gathering you in. But it's not in a quick way. It's not in one moment. We think we've been raised to believe that Mashiach, the Messiah, arrives, you know, and, and, and uh, there, there's flashes and there's thunders, and of course there will be, we have to know how it fits into this, but there will be a shifer, a, 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 a ram's horn that's blowing, and there will be, Hashem will gather us in, but you think it's going to be like on, uh, you know, al Kanfei Nesharim, we're going, to be, we're going to be brought here, you know, magically all of our houses and all of our shuls, it does say it about the synagogues, but all of our houses and everything that we have is going to fly through the air in this magical moment that Mashiach arrives, the Messiah arrives. The Pasuk doesn't say that. The Pasuk says, Hashem will bring us in, not in a flash in a moment. It is a process. Many people think that Mashiach will arrive in the future. What people don't understand and don't realize is that we are actually far into the process of Mashiach's arrival. We are far into the process. In fact, the first stage of Mashiach, of the Messianic Age, has already, is already, already almost done. And that's the Tkufa of Mashiach ben Yosef. I spoke about it, told you the Malbim, who says that in the first stage of the Messianic Age, so... The, the people of Mashiach ben Yosef, who I told you are the, the, the people who come from the Ashkenazic world, the world of Asa, of the, the West, they will be on top, they will be the leaders. And the, the Mashiach ben David people, who are from, from the Yishmael world, from the Arab world, they will be there as well. They will join together, they will be on bottom, they will be following the Ashkenazic people. And then there's a switch. I told you about that last time in the 16th. Sheikh podcast. If you haven't heard, I suggest going back to it. <coughs> I believe it was in the 16th or one of the more recent ones. There's a turnaround, right? And then Mashiach bin David comes. It's a new age in the process. And then Mashiach bin David, who comes, as I understand it, from the world of Yishmael, comes from the Svartic world. He becomes a leader. And he and the Ashkenazi the Mashiach bin Yosef Jews follow after the Mashiach bin David Jews. So I believe, and again, this is my intuitive understanding of things, that we are at the, we've already gone through a very large portion of the Mashiach bin Yosef process. And we are soon switching over into the Mashiach bin David process, very soon. So you want to know when Mashiach is coming, I have to tell you a secret. Mashiach is a process, and we've been in the process for a long time. 
people think that Mashiach is going to come and then everyone's going to magically be, be transported to the land of Israel. But I tell you that we need to transport ourselves to Israel. We have a choice right now. And I know that the choice is complicated, especially when there's a, when there's a war. <coughs> Excuse me. When there's a war in Israel. But I, but I assure you that the safest place to be, the safest place to be is in Eretz Yisrael, as I believe I've spoken about before. That in the Mashiach ben Yosef world, that's where the, the Mashiach ben Yosef, our sages tell us, the Gemara and Sukkah, Mashiach ben Yosef dies. The danger is where? Where was World War I, World War II? World War I, half a million Jews died. World War II, six and a quarter million Jews died. Where was that war? It was in the West. It was in the world of Esau. Eretz Yisrael was safe. Eretz Yisrael was protected. In World War II, Hitler and his henchmen didn't get into the land of Israel. Because this, this place is, by, in its essence, within the land of Mashiach ben David, is in the Mashiach ben David area. It's in the, you could say, the Arab world. There's a special protection here. And I, and I do want to point this out because I do believe that there's, of course, it's not to say there's no danger here. We see what just happened. We know, we know the terrible, terrible, terrible madness that's, that's, that just went on <coughs> in Israel. But, but the... The magnitude, the magnitude of what's possible destruction-wise outside of Israel is much, much more to be feared. That's all just so we understand where we are in this, and that we're a part of a process. We're in a process, and things are moving, and there are points along the way. And that's what I want to speak about. 1948, 1967, 2005, which was the year of the expulsion of, of, the, of Gush Katif. When we left Aza, which has created the problem that we're in right now. We left Aza, and now they're shooting at us from Aza. Now they're sending a thousand terrorists from Aza to, to kill a thousand Jews. 2005, 2024, 1492. These years are all connected now. What, what is the connection between them? That's, what I wanna, that's the main thing that I want to talk to you about and that I want to share with you. The, the, it's, it's hard not to notice, if you're looking for it. From 1948 to 1967, those two dates were 19, exactly 19 years apart. 19 years apart. Now, what's special about the number 19? I know we know. Who knows 10? I know 10. 10 is Sarah Sadibra, it's the Ten Commandments. Who knows? Four. Four are the mothers, three are the fathers, right? 13, 13 uh, tribes or 13 Midos of Hashem. <coughs> What's the number 19? Now listen carefully here, because this is the secret of 48, 67, 2005, 1492, and 2024. Tafshim Pei the year that we're in now. We have a 19-year cycle. Every 19 years, you have seven leap years. Now this is going to sound a little bit technical, but don't get lost in the technicality. It's not so important, the technicality of it. What is important is that in 19 years, we have seven leap years. What is a leap year? It's not like a non-Jewish leap year. On the secular calendar, you have a leap year, you add a day every four years, one day. On the Jewish calendar, because it's a lunar calendar, the lunar calendar is 10 days shorter, approximately 10 days shorter than the solar calendar. So every 12 months, consisting of 29 and a half days, again, I know, you might get lost in the numbers here. It's not, it's not so important. These numbers are not so important. What is important is that because it's a shorter year, the lunar calendar, which follows the, the moon, is a shorter year. Therefore, every two or three years, we add an extra month to the calendar. Every 19 years, we add seven leap years. And by doing so, we bring, every 19 years, you'll see, if you look at a calendar, that the Hebrew date and the English date coincide once again. So if let's say you were born in, on September 1st, 2000, in the year 2019, your birthday, your English birthday and your Hebrew birthday will be on the same day. Why? Because we have every seven years a, a correction for the, for the fact that it's moving backwards. The lunar, the lunar month is moving backwards. That's why Pesach can be, Passover will be a little bit earlier and then a little bit earlier and then all of a sudden a little bit later, much later. <clears throat> okay? And the pattern is like this. You ready? I wrote it down for myself. In the 19-year cycle, 
The first two years don't have an extra month. The third year has an extra month. Fourth year does not. The fifth year does not. The sixth year does have an extra month. Seventh year does not. The eighth year does. I'm not going to go through the entire thing, but here's the interesting thing. This is the interesting thing. Whenever we have a leap year, it's called a shnas ha'ibur. It's called the month of pregnancy, a year of pregnancy. Why? A pregnant woman, her stomach sticks out, right? So we have an extra month in the year. The stomach of the year, as it were, sticks out. But there's a much deeper thing that happens in the Shnasa Ibor. In, in a year where we have an extra month. There's a pregnancy in that year. There's a pregnancy. Something is conceived in that year. Just like a pregnancy has nine months, a human pregnancy has nine months, so too there's a pregnancy that happens within the year. Something is conceived quietly, hidden, you don't notice it, just like a woman, you don't notice that she's pregnant until about three months in. So too, in this pregnancy, you don't notice that it's happening until about three months in. Okay, but where does the pregnancy start? So, you would think it starts at the beginning of the year in Tishrei, right? I'll tell you a secret. It doesn't. It starts before. There's a Gemara. And this, you're going to, if you look in the description of the YouTube, you'll see a link to this Marsha in Sanhedrin, on Dafyud Beis. The Marsha in Sanhedrin, on Dafyud Beis, on page 12a. The Gemara there, I'm not going to get so into it. If you want to see the exact words of the Marsha, I highly recommend checking out the link in the YouTube description. <clears throat> it will bring you to my blog, and you can see the actual words of the Marsha. The Gemara tells us that, right now we have a set calendar, but it used to be that in order to make a Shana Seber, to, make, to add that extra month to the year, which is Adar Beis, right, the second, the second Adar, right, Purim is in Adar, and we have sometimes an extra month that moves Purim a month later. When can they decide that? So they can decide that up to the last second, as long as they haven't already said that it's going to be a new month, the month of Nisan, they can decide that other Beis is going to be, the month that's coming is going to be other Beis. But once they've decided that it's Nisan, so it can't be, once it becomes the month of Pesach, you can't switch it. it can't be a Shnas Eber anymore. You can't add a month. That's the latest, but what's the earliest? <coughs> so Gemara says that the earliest time that you can do it is in Av of the year before. Av of the year before. That's the Gemara. Now, the Maharsha has a whole deep discussion. All of a sudden talking about Av and Mashiach ben Yosef and Mashiach ben David and how we, the Jewish people have 12 months but we have an extra month. It's the 13th month. Do you know what the Mazel, the, the zodiac sign of Adar is? The zodiac sign of Adar is the fish, right? Mazel Adar Dogim. Do you know what the special blessing of Yosef is? He had two sons, right? He had an, there was an extra tribe, Yosef's son, Yosef's sons. There was that addition. Instead of 12, there's 13. 12 tribes, one of them splits in half. 12 months, one of them splits in half. It's Adar. What does Yaakov say to the sons of, of Yosef and his blessing? He says, They will be like fish in the midst of the land. Something about fish. Something about fish, they have the ability, they're, they're not seen, they're hidden. Because they're hidden, therefore they're able to do things quietly. They're, they're, they're away from the evil eye, they're away from the eye and hara. Yosef HaTzadik, Mashiach ben Yosef, has the ability to, to work quietly because he's working, says the, the Marsha, in Av. He starts in Av. Now hold on a second. Now this is me talking, this is not the Marsha. Let's, let's look for a moment from Av until Adar. Av of the year before, okay? And so we're talking about three months ago now. We're right now at the end of Tishrei. Av El Tishrei. Let's count. Av El Tishrei. Cheshvan Kislev, Teves, Shvat, Adar, Adar Beis. From Av till the end of Adar Beis, until the end of the second Adar, the month that's added, is nine months. The Marsha, as I understand him, is saying that in Av, something is conceived quietly, behind the scenes, 
We don't know what it is. We can't see it. Just like when a woman conceives, it's done quietly behind the scenes. Nobody knows. Even she doesn't know that she's pregnant. There's a conception. And that conception, we only start to see after three months when it's called hooker ubra. When she starts, her stomach starts to stick out. After three months, the stomach starts to stick out. Nine months after the conception, something is born. A baby is born. You, you can see what was originally conceived at the beginning. The DNA was all there, right? The entire, all of the instructions for, for, for this human being to, to be constructed were there in the original conception, but we don't see it until the baby is born after nine months. The Marsha says, as I understand it, something happens in Av of every leap year. Every time we have a leap year, the third year, the sixth year, the eighth year, etc. Every time we have a leap year, something is conceived in a hidden way and is revealed at the end of those nine months and moves forward the process of Mashiach, moves forward the Messianic process. 19 years. I, it just came into my mind. I want to I point it out. The Beis HaMikdash was destroyed. The Temple in Jerusalem was destroyed what year? We know 70 in the year 70 CE of the Common Era. There are those who say that the Temple was destroyed in 68, maybe 67. I want to point out that, let's, let's say, possibly, maybe the process began even in 67. It's just interesting that from 67 of the Common Era, or 68, until the year 1967, when the Jewish people received back the Temple Mount, Harabais, it's exactly 1,900 years, 1,900 years. That means 100 19-year cycles. Okay, so that's remarkable. But as I understand it, what, why would that be? What does that mean? What does that represent? It, it means, as I understand it, every time we have a leap year, we have a forward movement. We have a movement forward of the Mashiach process. It's happening all the time. Unbeknownst to us, if we look carefully, we, we might be able to see it. Okay, now that I give you all that information, now I want to look back at 1948 and 1967. I want to point out to you that both of those years were leap years. 1948, 1967. Those were both leap years, but they weren't just any leap year. They were a specific leap year. They were the eighth the eighth year of the cycle, which is the third leap year. Now, what's so special? They were 19 years apart, right? We, know, we noticed that. So they were, they were exactly 19 years apart, which means that they were the same type of leap year. Now, what's special about the eighth year of the cycle? What's special about the eighth year of the cycle? What's unique about it is that it comes, often it's three years, three years. Every three years is a, is a, is a leap year. But here it came after only two years. Now, what does that mean? What's, what is, how does that affect the, the leap year? What it means is that because it came so soon after the previous leap year, Pesach, Passover, is pushed further over. It's the latest that it can be in the eighth year. Actually, also in the 19th year as well. But for our purposes, <clears throat> I'm not going to discuss the 19th year. I'm going to only talk about the eighth year. The, the eighth year pushes Pesach as late as it can be this year. This coming year, which is a leap year, the eighth year of our 19-year cycle, Pesach will be April 23rd, which is the latest that Pesach can be. I think it's April 23rd or 22nd, I'm not sure. But that, whenever you, have, whenever you have a leap year, it pushes Pesach later in the year. Who cares? What does that mean? What is that, what's the significance of that? What do I care? When Pesach is, when Passover is, it could be we could understand that Pesach represents the power of the Jewish people. Passover is a time when we were chosen, we were taken out of Egypt. We'll see more about this. There's so much to say. Uh, I'm not limiting the time that I speak. I usually speak for 25 minutes. This is going to be longer than that because there's so much to say. It's, there's a lot of inf information here. I encourage you to listen all the way through to the end because you're gonna, it's, it's mind-blowing. It's really mind-blowing. Passover is pushed farther into the, towards the summer. Now, what's unique about the summer? 
The Marsha tells us something amazing. That Marsha in Sanhedrin, on Dafya Beis, tells us, do you know why Yosef, Mashiach ben Yosef, works quietly in the month of Av? Why does he start? Why does this process begin in Av? And interestingly, he says, Mashiach ben Yosef works quietly in Av in the land of Yishmael, in the lands of the Arabs, which is very interesting also. The Arabs have 12 Nassim, they have 12 princes. The Jewish people, we have 13 tribes, we have 13 princes. The extra spiritual aspect. But Mashiach ben Yosef, who is that 13th tribe, works in, in a hidden way in the land of Yishmael. Why? Because Esav, Esav, he thinks that he has power in the month of Av. The month of Av is when Esav was successful in destroying the base of Megiddo, destroying the temple. So Mashiach ben Yosef, at the time when Esav thinks that he has power, that's when Esav thinks, when Esav thinks that he has power, that's when Mashiach ben Yosef secretly is working to start process. He's moving forward the Mashiach process at the very moment when Esav thinks that he's the strongest. So what you see is that the summer months are a time of the power of Esav, the power of the Satan, of the Satan, the power of the, the West, of the negative forces that are presented by the West. But that's exactly when Mashiach ben Yosef works. And when Pesach, when Passover is pushed forward towards closer to the summer, that means that it gives more power, as we're going to see, it gives more power to, to Mashiach to do his job. The farther over Pesach is, the longer it's, the, there's an extension of power for Mashiach to do his job, even more so. Where do I get that from? What does that mean exactly? So here, we need to understand something. We need to look at, we need to look at something that the Marsha says elsewhere. It's a Marsha in Moed Katan and Daf Chav Ches. The Marsha there says that we have, this is another thing, okay? Talking about patterns. We have the 19 year pattern. We have the seven, every, there are seven leap years every 19 years. Well, here's another pattern that I never heard of before I read this Marsha and Again, this is going to be, I'll have a link. You can see this, <clears throat> I believe I have it on my, on my blog. I'll send you, I'll put a link in the YouTube description again here. So you can see this, Marsha, on page 28 in Moe Cotton. He speaks about the fact that we all know, it's a Pasuk, it's the verses from Pesach until Shavuos. How many days are there? So we count seven weeks. Seven times seven is 49. Shavuos, which is when we receive the Torah, Pesach, Passover is the Exodus. Seven weeks later, on the 50th day, we receive the Torah. God gives, says the Ten Commandments, the Jewish people, Mount Sinai. That was seven weeks later, exactly 50 days later. The Marsha says an incredible thing. The Marsha says, hold on a second, I want, to tell, I want to tell you something. If you go back from Passover, 20 days before, right, so we're going to have now, instead of, <coughs> excuse me, Instead of just 50 days, <coughs> instead of just 50 days, we're going to have 70 days. Go back 20 days. What happened 20 days before Pesach? Well, count back. Beginning of the month is 15 days earlier. Five days before that is the 25th of Adar. Okay? Again, this is a little bit detailed, but stay with me. This is really important. The 25th day of Adar is the day of the creation of the world. 25th day of Adar, you say, wait, didn't we just say on, on Rosh Hashanah that the, Rosh Hashanah is the day of the creation of the world? Well, I'll tell you, so actually, there's a machokis in the Gemara. When was the world created? Was it created in Nisan, the month of Passover? Or was it created in Tishrei, the month that we're in now, the month of Rosh Hashanah? We think of Rosh Hashanah as being the birthday of the world. That's what we say in the Rosh Hashanah davening. But actually, and this is also part of this amazing concept, but actually, there's a thesis that explains in the Gemara that, and it's in Rosh Hashanah, in Daf Yud Aleph, if I'm not mistaken, that the world conceptually was created in thought. Now, here we have the conception again, remember this idea. We have the conception of the world being created at the end of, Tish, at the end of Elul, beginning of Tishrei. And we have the actualization of the conception 
being at the end of Adar Beis, or at the end of Adar, let's say, the beginning of Nisan. Okay? Now, remember, we had nine months before this, right? Before we get to Nisan, before we get to Pesach, we have nine months that start in Av of the year before. <clears throat> What's born at the end of Adar Beis is something new, something that moves forward the Mashiach process. But, but there's another thing that happens. Because at the very end of Adar, you have the creation of the world, which culminates on the first day of Nisan. It's the creation of the world. The first day of Nisan, the world comes into being. But it starts, right, there's the sixth day of creation is when man is created. But it starts five days earlier, the creation on the fifth of Adar. From the fifth of Adar, says the Marsha in Moi Kotten on Daf Chavches, from the fifth of Adar, I'm sorry, from the 25th of Adar, until the sixth day of Sivan, when we receive the Torah. So you have 20 days from the 25th of Adar until Pesach. And then you have 50 days from the first day of Pesach until Shavuos, until we receive the Torah. It's a series of 70 days. So what, so what does that mean? What does that, what does that teach us? What, what is that, what's the significance of this? The significance of it is that just like you have, just like you have a conception, right? we spoke about a conception at the beginning of nine months, and then you have it developing, first you start to see that it's happening after three months, then six months later, after, after the full nine months, it's born. Seventy also is, it starts, the day one is when the world is created. Our sages tell us, as I'll say, the world is created, but by, by, it says, Yom Hashishi, the world was waiting, it was totally Vi'oimit, until the sixth day. What's the sixth day? The sixth day of Sivan, when the Jewish people would receive the Torah. If the Jewish people receive the Torah, the world exists. If the Jewish people do not accept the Torah, the world ceases to exist. Shem says, if not for the fact that I have a covenant with the Jewish people, that they accepted the Torah, the world is over. In concept, the world is created, but it's hanging, it's not complete yet, until 70 days later, when the Jewish people actualize the world, give it its full cum by, giving, by, by receiving the Torah, saying yes to God's will, saying yes to bringing Hashem, bringing God into the world. Okay, so, so we're starting to hear something interesting here, right? That means that there's a process which is completed after nine months from Av, in the leap year, right before the leap year, and through, on through Nisan, it's revealed. But then, there's another 70-day process that completes with the receiving of the Torah. And clearly, that's not the end of the process, as we'll soon see, because there are other 70-day connections. There are other 70-day connections that have to do with concept and actualization, and the reversal of that. But before I get to that, before I get to that, I want to show you something else. In the Spheros, in, which is, this is a Kabbalistic concept, I'm not going to explain it in depth, I'm not going to talk about it, you don't have to worry, I'm going to say it in a very simple way. But listen carefully, it's, uh, this is important. In the Spheros there are ten Spheros. The ten Spheros start here in the, in the head. Keser, Chachma, and Bina. They have to do with thought. A keser is a crown, it goes on top of the head. Chachma is wisdom, bina is intuition. It has to do with thought, it's hidden. The first three of the spheres are completely hidden. The next seven, which we know, there are seven days in the week, right? We all know about the number seven. Six days and then Shabbos. The next seven have to do with action. Chesed is the right hand, Gvura is the left hand. Tiferes is the center, is the torso. Netzach is the right leg. Hoyd is the left leg. Yesoid is the creative capacity of the human being as expressed in masculinity. And Machus, the last of the spheres, is the receiving. It's the receiving of all of that. Right? Shabbos, we have six days of action. We're involved in the six days of the week. On the seventh day, we enjoy all that we've created over the first six days. Whoever got ready through Shabbos, uh, before Shabbos, their food is ready from before. Everything is ready to receive. 
Why am I telling you all of this? What does this have to do with our conversation? Because the nine months, plus one, the nine months, and in the first month of a baby's life, the nine months of a, of a baby's development, they move in the same way. And if you line it up and you look at, let's say, the book, What to Expect When You're Expecting, <coughs> you'll see some amazing things about the fetal development. I'm not going to get into that. But the, the amazing thing is that the first three of the spheres are completely hidden. Notice two things. First of all, in, in the nine months from Av of the year, of the, the, the months before the, the leap year, Av El Tishrei, that corresponds to the hidden aspect of the process, completely hidden. You don't know that the woman is pregnant for the first three months. It only becomes clear after three months that she's hooker ubra, it starts to show. Hidden. I want to show you. We all heard of the 50 days from, from Pesach until Shavuos, right? But we never heard of these, the three weeks before that, from the 25th day of Adar until Pesach, that the Marsha talks about, right? We never heard of that. Because 70, right, 70 days, the 70 from the 25th of Adar till the first day, till the sixth day of Sivan, those 70 are really 10 spheres, 10 groups of seven, 10 weeks. The first three you never heard of because they're hidden. They're Keser, Chachmabina, they're hidden. You don't know about them. You don't know that the process has started of creation. Only from the Exodus itself, from Pesach, do you start to see that it's unfolding. It starts to unfold and you start to see, hey, we got released from Egypt. We're heading towards receiving the Torah. The process is moving. It's revealed. The process is revealed. This, is, this, is, this brings us to, and we have to come back to the number 70 because we're going to see that there's more things that have to do with 70. But there's an amazing thing that has to do with this concept because it starts to explain something that's going on now. And why I was hesitant even start speaking about this topic until now. I knew, I knew from this whole idea, which I wrote about 13 years ago, that every time that we have a, a, a leap year, something starts in Av, in August of the year before. 2010, I'm, I'm sorry, 2011 was a leap year. This is actually when I, when I learned this concept, actually from my own experience, which is a whole long story in and of itself, I'm not gonna get into. But, but uh, I just wanna check and make sure my microphone is still working, it is. <coughs> so, 2011 was a, was a leap year, but something happened on Rosh Chodesh Av of 2010 that tipped me off. I only realized it in hindsight. Something is developing, something's happening. You can look back at what happened that year and you'll perhaps you can discover it yourself. Something happens in Ab. So and, and I knew that this year, Tafshan Pei Dalid, which really the the conception of what happens in Tafshan Pei Dalid of 5784 starts before. It starts in Av of the year before. I knew that. I knew that 2024, Tafshan Pei Dalid is a special year. It's a year like 1948, 1967. I, maybe I didn't even say this yet. But both of those years are the eighth year of the 19-year cycle. 2024, Tafshin Pei Dalit is also the eighth year of the 19-year cycle. Tafshin Samachei, 2005, which was when the Jews were expelled from Gush Katif, was also the eighth year of, a 19, of the 19-year cycle. You can look back at different years, 1492. 1492 was the eighth year of the 19-year cycle. You know, we can look back at the different years and see, and you have to look for it, obviously. 1986 was also a year. That was the year that Jonathan Pollard was put in jail. But there are significant movements in the process. The fact, now, now I know I'm going back and forth between different ideas, but it's coming into my mind. I don't want to forget it. 2005, Gush Katif. That sounds like a, a, a move backwards, like a, a, a step backwards in the Mashiach process, doesn't it? They were expelled. Ah, but that's, there's a few things about it. First of all, the, the, the situation that we're in today, which is a huge forward movement 
in the Mashiach process. Huge. It's, it's, we're at a pivotal switchover point right now from the Mashiach ben Yosef world, Mashiach ben Yosef process to the Mashiach ben David process. It was, it was enabled by this terrible, terrible situation of the Jews being kicked out of Gush Katif, evacuated from, and, and the Arabs taking over, a terrorist state was created. That we see the terrible results of it today. But I want to point out to you something that you might not know, which I never realized until very recently because I read Netanyahu's book called Bibi. He says that that exact year, while that was going on, he was implementing tremendous economic changes that changed the face of the economy of Israel. In that year, Tavshin Samachay, at the very same time as the expulsion was going on, and he had to manage to do it before that thing happened, before it happened, because he had to go out of the government. He couldn't be part of a government that would expel Jews from, from, from Gush Katif. But he was staying in the government so he could implement these new economic changes that would change the face, change Israel's economy from being more of a socialist economy to being a more of a free market economy. And the, and the explosion of, of, of the economy of, the, of Israel over the last 19 years has been incredible. So that's, and that's how Mashiach ben Yosef works. Side by side with something that seems like a negative outcome is a positive outcome, an inc but an incredibly positive outcome. After World War II, the, the fact that the Jewish people in 1948 was able to, with the, with the permission of the nations of the world, reestablish a Jewish state in the land of Israel, unbelievable, side by side with the, such terrible destruction. 6,000 Jews in 1948 were killed in the War of Independence. 1967 also, many hundreds, if not thousands, were killed in that war, even though it was only a six-day war. But the forward movement, and this is how it is in the Mashiach ben Yosef process, and that's what Chazal hint to when he tells that Mashiach ben Yosef dies, the forward movement happens side by side with a, with a negative, with a terrible negative, so as we came into 2024 and to Tavshin Pedal this year that we're in now, which just began, I knew that if we that something something huge, something huge has to happen. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it would look like. But I was very curious what would be going on at the beginning of Av this year. And what was going on at the beginning of Av? It had it centered around the judicial reform. So I thought. Wow, the judicial reform, you know, this is huge because until now, the first 75 years of the state, the, the left, the, the, the negative aspects of the Western world, the secularist aspects of the, of the Western world, which dominated the Israeli world for the first 75 years, they're going to be subdued. There's a beginning of subduing and, and really the, the religious aspect of the, of the, of the country is much stronger. It's, there's a rive. There's a majority of people who believe in Hashem, believe in God. 67% of this country believe that equally important to democracy is that it needs to be a Jewish state. That's two-thirds. That's huge. So, but in order for that to happen, we need a judicial reform. So I thought that that was perhaps, you know, that's what was going on on, on Shkodesh Shav. I didn't, we didn't know, but but what I did know, and that's what I'm explaining to you based on all the things that we said, is that after three months of El Tishrei, here we are at the end of Tishrei, I knew that Hooker Ubra, you start to see that the pregnancy is happening. Something was conceived. You don't know what was conceived. We don't know what the DNA looks like. We don't yet have an ultrasound of this baby, this fetus that's, that's developing. But we are starting to see it starting to come out in the open. It's the amazing thing. After three months, at the end of Tishrei, we start to see an Amrash Chodesh of, of Cheshvan, which interestingly is when Esther Chayut, who's the head of the, of, the, of the Supreme Court today, who represents the left, it's her birthday and she's turning 70 and she's finished. Like her, her tenure is over. It's very interesting. But it's also incredibly interesting that all that's going on right now with this terrible, terrible uh, situation that we find ourselves in. And yet, there's like a, a, an intense shift, an intense shift that's going on 
and we're watching. And I want to show you that it's coming out in the open, just as we could have, we could have predicted. And it's this year, the eighth year of the 19-year cycle, which 1948 was, 1967 was, 2005, Gush Katif, economic reforms, 2024, Tavshin Pei is that kind of year. And so we have to watch and say, we are witnessing a tremendous push forward in the Mashiach process. What that looks like, I don't know. We will, we will watch it unfold. We'll know as the months go on, and I'll say, you have three trimesters, right? You have three trimesters. You have Av El Tishrei, which we are just finishing now. And you have Chesh Van Kislev Tevis, which means through Kislev, through Chanukah, on through the next month, it becomes more and more intense. Like, how does a woman feel when she's pregnant? The pain, is, the pain gets stronger and more difficult. And then in the last three months, Shvat, Adar and Adar Beis, we'll, we'll see the most. And by the end of Adar Beis, around the 25th of Adar, we'll start to see where this is all really leading. And then in Nisan, it's born. We'll watch as it's born at the beginning. Whatever it is that's developing through this time, we'll watch as it, as it comes to a, to a full expression in Nisan. But it doesn't end there. And that's why it's really interesting, and that's why I said we need to come back to the number 70. Because the number 70 means that from the end of Adar, which is the end of this nine-month system, there's another system of 70 days, which is now we're starting to watch this child develop. We're starting to watch. The baby is born. Now, what does that look like? What does it look like? It's called Exodus. It's called the next phase of it, going into receiving the Torah. Right? Isn't it interesting that in that time period, when is... When is the day, in 1948, that they declared the, the independence of Israel? It was in the 49 days between Pesach and Shavuos. Hey, Iyar, the 5th of Iyar, in that month. Iyar is a very interesting month. It's the month between Nisan and Sivan. <coughs> when do we get back to Yerushalayim? Chavches Iyar, the Six-Day War, was at the end of Iyar. In that 49 days between Pesach and Shavuos. Because now this baby is born and now it's, and now it's happening. Now I want to tell you another 70, and this is remarkable. From Chav Ches, and this is kind of the reverse, it sounds like the reverse. From Chav Ches, Iyar, okay, Yom Yerushalayim, until Tisha B'av. 70 days later is Tisha B'av. Meaning, Tisha B'av is the day that we lost the Beis HaMikdash 1,900 years earlier approximately. 119 year cycles earlier. Based on this story on the Tisha B'av. But 70 days before that is the reversal of it. When the Jewish people get back Harabais, when we get back the potential to actually build a Beis HaMikdash, when we get back, it's the 70, it's like conception in reverse. Right? So, right? Uh, Rabbi Akiva saw the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash, but he laughs because he saw within it that Mashiach is born on Tisha B'av, but it, but it goes backwards. It goes backwards. So you have a 70. Interestingly, Gush Katif, when were they expelled? It was planned, the expulsion on Tisha B'av itself. So in, in the, when, it, when it expresses itself in a seemingly negative way, it can, it can manifest around the time of Tisha B'av. These are all theories. These are all I, I I'm not predicting. I don't I, I don't I don't want to predict. That's why I didn't start I didn't start talking about this and share these thoughts, which I've had for some of these thoughts for 13 years, some of these thoughts for, for the last year or two. I didn't want to predict and I don't want to predict. All I'm saying is that there are patterns and that we can watch things develop. If we look, it's it's amazing what we'll see. And I truly believe that we are in a, uh, we're at, a th at the threshold. We're at a turning point, switching from the Sheikh Ben Yosef process, which is where the secular left has been on top and in charge of Israel. We're switching, and you know, when we switch processes, when we move out of a certain process into the next process, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a birth. It's a birth. <coughs>
And we're moving into a the Mashiach bin David era, or that it's starting to be more openly manifest. And I don't mean that, I, I don't know. I don't know if Mashiach bin David is going to be revealed. I, I'm not a Navi, I'm not a prophet. I'm just talking about patterns that we can look at and we can see, we can recognize that are going on. But we're moving into the Mashiach bin David process, just like until now, we haven't really... Who's Mashiach bin Yosef? Have we seen a person who's Mashiach bin Yosef? I actually have my very, very strong um, uh, beliefs as to who that person might be. And uh, the hint I'll give to you is actually in, a, in, the, in Yeshaya, in the, the Yalkut Shemoni, the famous Yalkut Shemoni, which I quoted to you in Samech. It says that, Amr of Shimon ben Pazi, but Oysa Shah, Magbiyah Kodesh Baruch Hu the Mashiach at Shmei Hashemayim. It's talking about Mashiach ben Yosef. At that time, Hashem is going to raise up Mashiach to the highest heavens. Praise the Mezziv Kvayd, Mibnei Ha'umus Ha'elum, Mibnei Parsim HaRashoyim. Hashem is going to raise us up and give, I'm sorry, raise Mashiach up, Mashiach ben Yosef, and give him from the shine of his honor. Because of the nations of the world, and because of the evil Persians, interestingly, right? The Persians, the Iranians. I mean, like, Ephraim Echshiach Tzikenu, Hevi Dayan Al Elu. The Medrash says that Mashiach ben Yosef is given the power to judge over these. Who's these? The nations of the world and the Persians. That's, Mashiach ben Yosef has the, has the power to bring judgment and destruction upon the nation of Persia and the nation of Iran. I'd like to share with you one more, th one more thing, and that's a story that I saw uh, recently that I was, uh, I, I stumbled on. So I was sitting in the shul with my son and there was a little bit of time to learn and we, we stumbled over this. It's a story with the Chavitz Chaim. It's in the Sefer, Chavitz Chaim Torah, in Parshas Va'era. It's in a newer version of Chavitz Chaim Torah. Shamati mi piya goin Rabbi Zalman Meltzer, Zetzal. I heard the following from Rabbi Zalman Meltzer, who was quoting Rabbi Hanan Wasserman. Ki lefnei melchemet ha'olam ha'shniya, before the Second World War, pam, yashav pam moran ha'chavitz chaim ve'omar. One time, the Chavitz Chaim was sitting, and he said the following. And now, as I quoted in previous, Parsha pod, in previous Mashiach podcasts, the Chavitz Chaim was known to say that there will be three Gogu Magog wars. The first was World War I, the next one will be much worse. So he said this a similar idea, similar story. I see dark clouds that are gathering over the heavens of Europe. There's a tremendous danger that's hanging over the Jewish people. So B'chanan Wasim was shaken by what the Chavitz Chaim said and he said, what's going to be? Chavitz Chaim answered, The mountain of Zion, that's where there will be a remnant. There will be salvation on the mountain of Zion, in Jerusalem, in, in Eretz Yisrael. And it will be holy. You have to understand that at the beginning of the state of Israel, so who was in, or in the 30s when the story happened, so who was, were the ones leading, who were the leaders? They were all secularists. They were, they were those who were against the Torah they, and managed to really cause a tremendous destruction of Torah values within the Jewish people over the last 75 years. So Hosef Rabbi Chanan Vishal, so Rabbi Chanan asked him, Are Shom Eretz Yisrael Meskavim Mechilonim, where they are at Torah? How can you say that Israel is where it's going to be a salvation? The the secularists are the ones who are have the power there, and they defy the Torah. They're against the Torah. On Allah Chavetz Chaim, Chavetz Chaim answered, Nemer v'hoya kodesh, hanavi mishtamish kam bevav ha'hipuch. The Basik says, and it will be holy. 
And in the end, it says, on the mountain of Zion, there will be a remnant, there will be a salvation, and it will be holy. It says, and it will be holy. The, word, the letter Vav in Tanakh, whenever you have the word Haya, the Haya, Haya really means it was. But whenever you have a Vav, and, the letter, the letter Vav is the word and. Whenever you have that before a word, so it, it changes the tense from past to future or future to past. So the Vav is called the Vav Ahipuch, the switching letter. So the Chavitz Chaim, the Vav, it says, and it will be holy, is a, it's going to switch. In the end, Israel will transform from, from being a secular state to being a place of holiness and spiritual purity. We're watching in front of our eyes this change, this transformation. We're watching it in front of our eyes. It's, it's an amazing thing to see. If we open our eyes, we recognize the patterns. We, we notice the dates, 1948, 67, 2005, 2024. We start to notice these things and we start to not coming to predict. And that's, not my, that's not my goal here. It's just to observe and to take stock. We are in incredible times, very special times, and they are unfolding in front of our eyes.